Welcome to the German Development Institute, um, Deutsches Institut für Entwicklungspolitik. Um, I with me uh, Inge Kaul. She is a junk professor at the Hertie School of Governance in Berlin. And Inge, she was the first director of UNDP's uh, Human Development Report Office. And she led the team working on the Human Development Reports. Furthermore, Inge is author of numerous publications, not at least on global public goods. Inge, recently you published an edited volume on global public goods and the subtitle of your introduction is Understanding Global Public Goods, Where We Are and Where To Next. How do you respond to your own questions? Where we are, we have come a long way and I was actually quite surprised how many publications exist. We covered the period from 1970 to today and uh, we saw contributions from many disciplines. However, there are two sets of uh, contributions, those that stay within uh, conventional molds and repeat old theories and uh, look backward for confirmation of their theories, and then there are the modernizing ones, looking forward to see how global public goods that don't respect national borders or any other borders uh, could be accommodated uh, within our governance systems and what reforms are required for that. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have learned a lot, but we have a long way to go still. Okay. Um, the to context of global policies is very dynamic uh, and quite different from the past. Uh, we have the Agenda 2030 uh, for Sustainable Development um, and the Paris Agreement on Climate Change on the one hand. At the same time, the willingness of several main global actors to contribute to global governance is, is shrinking. What does it mean for the provision of global public goods? We haven't done too well in actual policy practice in the past. And I must say a certain amount of nationalism was there involved too, because uh, things have happened where global concerns overlapped with national interests. And we have been rather sort of hesitant to move beyond and actually do what the ocean requires or what the uh, atmosphere requires. So it was always difficult. And therefore, I would say we have to come to a new realism and recognize, be prepared to recognize that uh, with globalization, we better cooperate because it pays. Germany is heading the G20 in 2017. How do you look at the G20 and other club governance approaches when it comes to the provision of global public goods? I would say I would not necessarily call uh, the G20 to begin with a club because the membership is quite diverse. And uh, so I'm actually quite uh, optimistic about the role that the G20 could play. And um, I think we have a great opportunity now uh, that we um, re really demonstrate that we have to get going on some of the global challenges that climate change is happening. So we can't do a little bit here and a little bit there. We really must have a strong investment. And therefore, I hope that um, uh, in Hamburg, in uh, the summer, when we have the G20 summit there, that the leaders will be so foresighted, foresighted that um, we will decide to finally really get going with international cooperation and to construct a conducive architecture for international cooperation. And I also thought about the name, the Hamburg Project. Inge, thank you so much for your uh, very interesting, inspiring responses. Thank we are looking forward um, um, to our event tonight on global public goods. Um, Inge just recently published an edited volume, volume on global public goods, and you are going to present uh, this book tonight, and um, I'm quite sure that we are going to have very interesting discussions. Thank you for your attention.